Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Riley Pearson, the host of the Pearson Podcast, and this is episode 10, finally hit double digits, and I am with a wonderful, fantastic, beautiful human being, and his name is Jax Pearson. Hello, everyone. (laughs) He's my little brother, and he's been on once before. You all know, you all know and love him. Um... So, what are we talking about today, John? I don't know anything. Anything you want to know about, or like just throwing about? it, throwing it on you? Um, well, there's a lot of things. Me and Jax. Um, well, we can talk about what you got today. That's kind of fun. Yeah, we good. Um, do you want to just talk about the story of it, or talk about it? Yeah. So. Um, Jax got his first car today, or his first vehicle, and it happens to be an SUV. Um, so that's really exciting in itself. So, mm-hmm. and it comes with a pretty entertaining story. You want to, because I don't know much about it. Do um, you want to go into it? Sure. Yeah. So um, yesterday, um, uh, my dad, or our dad, uh, he came up to me and he's like, he's like, hey, um, look at this, look at this car I found while I was um, just driving home. And he showed me this picture of this this car. Uh, it was a nice white uh, Hyundai Hyundai car, and I didn't know anything really about the type of car. Um, and I was looking at the pictures, and there weren't pictures of the inside, but just of the outside. Um, and from the outside look, there was no like dings or any scratches or anything that I could see that was uh, an issue. And so I was like, oh yeah, that's definitely something I like. It looks nice. And and so um, dad called the guy and was like, yo, uh, is this still available? And, and he's like, yeah, um, if you're able to come over at like whatever time tomorrow, then we can look at it. And so that's what we did this morning is we called him and we were like, oh, um, are we able to come over there and look at it? And he's like, yeah, well, someone's over here about to buy it. Really? Um, and so we, we literally, like, he just told me right now, get up, let's go. Which in itself, that's really weird because it's like, he said yesterday, um, the guy you're buying it from, he's like, come at 10. So he must have talk to some other people and be like come earlier or maybe it was a tactic like they that he told them to come at 10 to and a tactic was to go earlier or something i don't know but so your dad was just like we need to go right now and you guys yeah. drove right over yeah because dad knows that if these people are that serious to be on time because i think we got we it was like 10 10 when we got there Mm-hmm. we called them at 10 and they yeah. were already there so they were serious you know dad was, yeah. dad knew he knew that we had to act fast mm-hmm. so we we rushed over there and there was no one there and so we talked to the guy and he's like he's like oh yeah the guy the people they're gonna buy it we already agreed um and they're just gonna go get a check um, mm. and the guy's like well i didn't really want to check cash would be better or just some other form of payment would be better and uh the guy and dad was like yeah i can do cash right now if you want um and so we uh, we asked him if we could test drive it right and mm-hmm. so we test drove it and we went all the way back to our home to show uh, mom and oh really yeah we, we drove it back to so mom could see it and so the dad could get the stuff um and oh gotcha and uh so we we went back mom liked it and mom was like yeah it's 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 nice and everything and you know and so uh we drove it back and we we told him we were just talking to him and how this is like gonna be my first car and you know so we went inside and and um no one was there still the people didn't come back at all and Mm. you know and we went inside and and before we went inside, he said he was kind of giving us a thumbs up, like we got it. 
And so we were like, oh, we got it. You know, it's ours. Um, but then he's like, oh, we're going to we're gonna flip a coin. We're going to flip a coin for who gets it. And I'm thinking, like, that is going to be the most awkward situation if, you know, we're sitting with two different people who want the yeah. car face-to-face. No, and one of them is going to be super frustrated and the other one's going to be super happy yeah that was just a tactic a dumb one but a tactic just to be like well it's out of my hands you know like i'm whoever it lands on so you can't get mad at me because i'm not choosing the coins choosing Mm -hmm. when he could have should have just been like you called first you have cash got it but go on and um uh what was i gonna say Um, after the after he said coin toss dad probably talked to him Oh yeah, so like we went inside and um, we went inside to just talk to him and, and so he could see some paperwork and and um, dad was like signifying to me like you gotta you gotta like do some puppy eyes <laughs> puppy <laughs> eye type crap you know you gotta be like yeah this, this is my first car can do you think uh, like I could get it instead of them or something like that but obviously mm-hmm. in, in more words but um, yeah. And I don't like doing that. I kind of just like letting the way it goes. But since this was yeah. a different situation, I had to do something. Yeah. So I didn't exactly do that because I didn't think it would work. So the guy ended up talking about his job and he was, he was like a nurse or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, and so I kind of just started to make conversation to try to see if we could like relate or just have him be more comfortable. Yeah, I mean, you um, want to go in the medical field as well. Yeah, and so I was like, so how long have you been a nurse or whatever? And I got in a conversation of him retiring in a few weeks or something. Wow. But, um, but yeah, um, and then he's like, okay, you guys, you guys got it, you know, you guys can, you guys can do it. And so we just spent yeah. the next like 20 minutes setting everything up and nice. the guys, the people came back. I'm not sure if it's the people who were they had the, the check or new people and so the funny thing is is the people that had the cash first they actually called earlier the big the first day they actually mm. called before us so wow. yesterday so mm-hmm. so they suckers had, yeah but um the people came to the door and the guy went outside and he's like oh yeah it's already been sold and everything and we're just sitting down right by the window and they're looking at us <laughs> like Stuckers, <laughs> so you're like behind him going, <laughs> <laughs> but um, that, that was that was fun. Yeah, that's awesome. And and Dad's really good at buying cars. He bought my car, and he's just good at not not sweet talking, but just talking straight up and giving him the facts and making it very easy for them to understand. It's like you know, it's going to a great place um for a good reason you know blah 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 Mm -hmm. and um yeah so he got he's he's the one that got uh my car as well just so you know if anybody's wondering both of us will pay for our cars um Jax is getting a little bit of help from our grandparents which is incredibly incredibly generous of them but he's paying the rest of it right Mm -hmm. yeah so it's like um it's not like you know mommy and daddy bought us cars and you know it's <laughs> mine's a 2003 and jax is a 2004 right mm-hmm. so it's not like we went out to the dealership and said all right sonny pick whatever one you want ah, <laughs> pa. you know like uh-huh. in the movies no and he's been looking for weeks you know and uh this perfect one came came up and he's always really good at negotiating. He negotiated mine from like twenty five hundred to fifteen hundred, which was, I mean, that's a thousand dollars, you know. And mine was like great condition, and uh, yours was two thousand, which in itself is a good deal. And there would, have, you know, there's no room for negotiating, you know, because there were three groups ready to pay. But yeah, that that really worked out, and it's a really cool looking car. It had everything Jax wanted. Um, I mean, yeah, you weren't simple. asking for anything crazy. Simple, comfortable, mm-hmm. AC. It's nice and clean. Yeah. It, there's like the paint is still nice on the outside. Like there's not any scratches yeah, or anything. 
anything I've seen. It like if like someone, like shit. it looks like it's only a couple of years old. Yeah, it really on outside. does. On the inside, it looks like not even a year old. It yeah. looks like no one's been in there. Like, like yeah. It's like the back seat have nothing wrong with it. The back seat yeah. have like literally no stains. It's even the same with the front, and there's no stains, there's no scratches, there's no tears, there's no anything. It's literally just clean. And yeah, even like the floor rugs are clean. They're all like looks like no one's ever yeah. even like stepped on them. And um, you know, it kind of makes really, me uh, makes me think that like maybe he maybe he didn't have kids, maybe. You know, because if you don't have kids and you're kind of just someone that doesn't, you know, doesn't like maybe go out like one thing. I don't know if you ever noticed, but you hardly ever see adults in the backseat of cars, you know, because they have cars. And -hmm. if you don't have kids, no one's sitting in the back. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? So it's like and that would so no one probably even ever sat back there and that's what my car looked like um when i got it but i had years of you know going out with my friends so that changed very quickly but that was that was worth it because i finally was the one with the you know the room the nice comfortable car not like some small car where it's like everybody competed for the front seat just because that's the only good seat like the back seats were you know they recline they're super nice and and uh, yeah um but yeah it's that's a that's a i mean it's pretty dang close to a miracle you know yeah, it really is transpired and, like because the, the we when uh, dad showed me last night um what it was i didn't know what it inside looked like so i tried to look it up online and almost all of them that were used were selling for a minimum four thousand um and they were in such worse condition so like i could probably sell this for four thousand if i wanted yeah, to yeah no i know that um, makes sense and so easily yeah and like the the main thing that i really like about it is one it's it's just simple like yeah because like even with your car you like when uh it, i don't know what the freak that's called uh when you put it in reverse or whatever mm. uh you have like the gears and everything i mean i'm not a huge fan of that because it doesn't make sense to me but with this car, like where you have to move down yeah, yeah yeah well it's just it's 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 to where you don't have to look you can mm-hmm. you go right yeah. and then I'm in mm-hmm. reverse. I'm in drive. And the other one, you kind of you like go down, up. You know, you could be anywhere on it. But mm-hmm. I, so with I this, it's just it's just yeah. drive, neutral, reverse, and park, which I I like. Um, yeah, because it's just simple, just simple. And then with like even the the controls on the in the middle, it's all simple. It's all just straightforward. And this is the air conditioning. This is the heating. This is the yeah it, you know it's the lights this is and the- low miles yeah. too that car like yeah. that mine's really high but what yours is yours like 200 almost two hundred eighty thousand. but the thing is it's an acura and and the people below before me it was only one owner and it was an older couple that just mainly highway miles and treated it's super nice like i have a feeling when i blasted my stereo for the first time that was the that was the first time that stereo has ever been turned on that high you know or even past like the fifth notch literally and it can go up to like 15 notches so but yeah i mean it and it's still to this day is a really good really great car so i mean you can have you'll have that car if you want for I mean, a very, very long time, you know, yeah. until you can get a Tesla or something. <laughs> is I'd like that to be the next step. <laughs> um, see, it's it's hard for me to. I mean, the only thing that's bad, literally, only thing that ba- that's bad about my car, literally, only thing, is the gas mileage is terrible. And and it's it's bad. Like it's like fourteen miles of the gallon. So. And if you so, if you think 
gallon, I don't know, 293 something a gallon and say, you know, work is like 10 miles away, you're spending like $6 in gas just driving to work every single day. That's a lot. That's almost, that's like half an hour of work, but you know, you gotta do what you do, you gotta do. But so it's, it's, it's kind of tempting for me to want to try and do some, you know, deal where I, I get like a different car, but I love my car so much. There's so much about it that I love. It's, it's just difficult because that mileage thing, because I'm, I'm really about saving money now. Um, even though as soon as I get money, I think about buying crap instantly. It's not just regular crap. It's like the most expensive crap you can think of. Well, that's like everyone's like first thought when they're handed us, you know, a large portion of money, especially for free. You know, and like someone's like, here's two thousand dollars to live. Yeah. Well, well, I am. My living is covered for the most yeah, part. Yeah, my living is so covered. Like... I have a car. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I have everything I need. So let's just throw it towards something I want. Yeah. yeah i mean literally so my next purchase that i really want is i want to get an ar-15 whoops i want to get an ar-15 um that's real that's what i've wanted for a very very long time um because the cool thing about that is in a in somewhat of a similarity it's kind of like getting a pc you know you get like the skeleton and then you can upgrade its ram you can upgrade its gpu you know blah 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 this one i can upgrade the receiver the barrel get better optics and and obviously the whole thing of you know in case zombies attack it'd be nice to have you know um but realistically i just want it because it's cool and i love shooting and and I, hopefully we're you know I, we're, we're planning on moving soon so um, we're planning on getting a place with some land and you know we can shoot on our land that'd be amazing um yeah i don't know i mean that's really what i want but then again you have to think you know i have to spend it see there's a safe i need a safe right well need is kind of you know iffy because i could for our household it's kind of necessary i mean kind of i feel like if you're I don't not think... living alone like if you're if you're living alone put it wherever you want well but the thing like... is it's not about it's not about saying our little brother spencer who's 14 i don't think he's gonna grab it and go crazy with it I just don't want if someone broke into the house when no one was here, they could easily grab it and, you know, go on. But if I got some sort of, so that's why I need a safe, you know, um, it's, it's not because I think Spencer's going to grab it or, you know, whoever it's because I could hide it too, um, pretty well. Um, but but I might as well just buy a, kick, a safe, but you know, and and this really nice one that I probably would never have to buy a safe again is like six hundred dollars and holds a bunch of them, and it's like really really good. Um, I think it's like five or six hundred dollars or something, which I think you know holds like a bunch of guns too, a bunch of guns, pistols, whatever. Um, but yeah, I need I'd need a safe, but. And I have my ideal build. Um, If anybody cares, I would get a scope and um, like scope, I don't know, like six times zoom and and a variable scope would be nice, but, and then a candid sight. So you're looking like down the, down the barrel ideally. And then you turn to the right and on the angled is a red dot. So you can go long range and then close, you can switch it uh, for closer range and things like that. 
and uh, I got that from Tarkov. I always thought, I always wondered, I'm like, what is that called? Because I thought it was just like, because some some people in Tarkov, and we we can you know talk about Tarkov in a little bit, but some people in Tarkov just which is a video game but just have like no top scope just have the candid sight which didn't make sense but it looks cool you know and they also have an angled grip so you usually see a vertical grip um they have like an angled where it's like a 45 degree off to the side it's kind of cool um so yeah that, that that's what i want um it's all just a flex i mean yeah exactly and and I may or may not already have um, weapons of mass destruction, but that's my next goal. Um, so yeah, that's what I want really badly. And that is probably what I'm gonna spend my stimulus check on. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about that. But then again, gotta get it safe. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't mm-hmm. know, it's a difficult situation. Just going to be another, I was going to say another white kid with an AR-15, but that yeah, sounded bad. just said it. <laughs> yeah. Said it I, anyway. Yeah. I, I couldn't leave the viewers hanging like that. Um, but yeah. You want to talk about Tarkov? Hmm. I don't know. Let's change the subject to something. What else what? do you want to know? Is there anything else you want to know? No. Right here kidding. About? Yeah. Um, well, one thing I'd like to ask you about, if you're willing on sharing, is your... Uh... <laughs> I was going to make a joke. Um, your ghost stories. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I could, I could explain or I could share them. Yeah, I mean... He's got some crazy ones, ladies and gentlemen, and and uh, for the skeptics out there, he's got no reason to lie, uh, no reason at all. Um, so, I guess how should we get into this? Ever since, do you want to start from where it started and where it's gone? Kind of like yeah, because just real quickly, you know since a child you've you've always kind of like been like almost you could it, it seems like you don't almost see into through the filter you know um you you would get like these i don't know if there were visions or just feelings and um things like that so you kind of just have been a very what you know it goes beyond words but it goes beyond words that is you so Mm -hmm. um so that's just kind of like a introduction because obviously i've been there since you were in mom's stomach and until you're near here now so i've seen your whole story you've got nothing to hide now but (laughs) yeah you can start um from wherever you think because you know best of where to start and fully explain it whatever so what what you were just explaining how I used to like kind of feel things. Um, I don't know if it has any relation to mm-hmm. the events that I've ever witnessed, but right. um, I have had moments in my life when I was younger where I've kind of just felt like something was wrong or something was going to happen that was wrong, and it did, or something did happen. Like one time, me and my parents were driving to um to, i don't know where we were i think we were on the freeway Long Beach? Oh. no i think we were just going on the freeway and uh i just felt something didn't feel right and so i had mom call home and spencer and our older brother got in like a pretty big argument like like a lot of yelling and <laughs> Just you know, he said our older brother, I'm the oldest brother. <laughs> Go on. Oh my. It's more talking about me and Spencer. I'm the king, but go on. Mm. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but but yeah, that, that was another, another a couple yeah. others have happened, but yeah. So uh, I guess I'll just start um from the first few that I can remember. 
um, that are very clear. Mm. So uh, I don't know how old I was, maybe 11, maybe 10, I don't know, 12, I don't know. But uh, I was the first time that I remember, the first time, the first time I've witnessed something where I was like, whoa, what was that, you know? Mm. Um, and it, it was actually in Kohl's. Um, it's like a clothing store. And uh, me and my mom were in like the corner um, and there was no one around. Cause me, I'm a very aware person. I like to know where people are, who they are, like what they look like, you know, I like to know these things. And if someone's coming towards us or if someone's leaving, there was no one around us. And I was just looking around and I saw this like figuration of a little girl running across the like hall into an aisle in the corner of my eye. I literally saw this girl run across and I was like, what the heck? What the heck are you doing running in here? And me, I went to go see what why they're running. And so I went to go over and there was no one there. Like it was in the corner of a store. So I looked all around and there was literally no one, no one. And I just thought that was the weirdest crap. Yeah. And I ended up seeing that little girl again. I can't remember where I saw her, but I know I saw her again. And once I, I saw the little girl the second time, um, I ended up seeing her like a, like a woman, like an older woman. Um, like it was her as an older woman? No, almost like her like her guardian or mother or something like that. Uh. Kind of felt like that's what it felt like. And so once I kept saying these, I I, I didn't like it. You know, it's disturbing yeah. when yeah. you see crap that you're not supposed to be saying. And so I asked my grandma if she could take me to like a professional to have, get some help. And so we ended up uh, we ended up going to like some professional, and um. I'm not sure if she's legit. I don't think she was. She wasn't amazing. But, you never know. But she did give me some valuable advice that did help. She told me that the woman that I'm seeing and the daughter, they're either asking for help. I can't remember what else she said. I think they, she said that they're asking for help, but they don't, they don't know what I can do or something like that. <laughs> but they told me that the best thing you could do if you feel like something's there or you see something and you don't want it there, tell it to leave you alone. As simple as that sounds, yeah. it's literally you just tell them, I don't want to see you. I don't want you here. And they'll leave you alone. Well, that and doesn't I ended work up, in the movies. No, it does not. But then again, in movies, that's more stronger presence and crap like that. Yeah, you know? you're right. But... I ended up doing that and it went away. I did not see a single thing happen for a couple so of years. After you talked to her, the spiritual lady, you saw them again? I did I did not see them again. You just I said, told them. You, you like in your own time, you're just like, Don't don't talk to me. I don't yeah. want to see them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. And so I didn't see him. For like a couple of years, I didn't see anything. I didn't see, I've never, I've never seen that woman or little girl ever again to this day. I've never seen anything like it ever again. But, but after a couple of years, I think I was like 13, maybe. Um, I'm trying to remember the event that I saw. Okay, so I think it was in our house. Um, me and our little brother Spencer, we are playing, and um, we have a bathroom on the second floor. And so I was running, and I went to go run the bathroom to probably just mess with my hair. Um, I don't remember what we were doing. I think we were playing, and I went to go look in the mirror, and I looked in the mirror, and there were two maids standing right behind me, like they were like the old time maids, you know, with like the the dresses and the the white clothing mm. um and one was taller and one was shorter and a bit bigger and it's really really weird because i looked at them and they were looking at me in the mirror like they were standing behind me mm -hmm. looking at me 
and that scared the crap out of me because that how Spencer clear was it very so was it like it was like i thought that there was someone in there okay so like it wasn't like they were like translucent or something no, it was it was it was physical looking wow. like physical form and so spencer came in the room and was like what is that do you see that you say and, that yeah i told him i was like do you see that do you see that because i knew no one was behind me because i looked and then i looked back at the mirror and no one was there and spencer came in and i was like did you see that did you see that he's like no i didn't see anything i was like did not just see those two maids standing in the mirror standing behind me he's like no and that was the most clear at the time that i've ever seen mm. and then about a couple of years ago, um, the most clear picture, the most clear thing I've ever seen in relations to um, paranormal or, or spiritual events was the time I was at my grandparents. Now, my, my grandparents' house, they've told, which I didn't know at the time, I'll just, I'll explain the story and then explain. But so I was at my grandparents' house and I used to stay over there for like a sleepover, right? And they had like a living room and I'd sit in there and watch TV at, at night. And this was probably like 10, 11 at night. And they were sleeping and I was just chilling. And I wanted to go get a glass of water. And so I'm, it's hard to explain how like, you know, the mirror, like by the uh, table, when you go into the kitchen, there's a to, mirror on the wall. To get to to get to the kitchen from the living room you kind of have to walk down a hall and at the end of the hall towards the kitchen there's a mirror yeah and so i was walking towards the kitchen and there's the mirror at the uh, end of the hall or a big mirror it's like a yeah. whole wall and i look in the mirror and there's this very skinny old lady standing right behind like right behind me looking me in the eyes in the mirror like like literally in the eyes and that was it was so clear wow. like it was so clear that i was so paranoid the entire night because i thought that it, i thought there was someone in the house Ugh, jesus i literally thought there was a lady behind me i was so scared and so the next morning i went to grandma and i was like yeah i was like it's like grandma I, I saw this lady standing right behind me last night. And she's like, you did? And she's like, let me tell you something. When your little brother used to sleep at sleep over at our house. He Spencer? Would sleep, yeah, Spencer. He would sleep in her bedroom on the floor. Mm. Um, and one night, Spencer woke up and there was a lady standing over him. And that's what Spencer told her. A lady of the same description that I gave grandma. The same wow. lady that I saw was the same lady Spencer saw. And apparently, like, the lady was talking to Spencer in some negative fashion. I don't, I don't remember that, but all I know is grandma told the lady, she just said, like, you know, out loud, like, you, if you're going to stay here, you cannot be, you know, scaring my grandchildren. Mm hmm and so she didn't do it anymore she's like no one ever saw anything until the time that i saw her hmm. and so when when grandma told me that that spencer witnessed that i was like oh my god so it's almost certain that something is there there's a lady there because of the exact same description and till this yeah. to this day i want to know what the lady looks like i want to see if if uh like so a, a lady died in mm -hmm. that house yeah i believe so and yeah so i want to see sure if we can find a picture at least one yeah Grandma i want to see if i can find a picture of her that. yeah because if, yeah, we if we were to find a picture of her and it looked the exact same as i remembered i would i would i would never doubt anything i've ever seen again and i have had probably more sleepovers there than you know, all of you guys combined, and I've never seen anything like that. Um, I, I, I never seen, I've never seen anything like that. Um, slept in the living room many a times. You know, me and me and Shelby have slept over there. Me and Micah have slept over there. Um, yeah, 
crazy. That that gave me chills throughout that story. And um, um, you said there's been times where you've been laying down in the house. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Go on. Yeah. So that. that was so. After that, I didn't really see anything because I did the same thing where I was like, I don't want you here. I want you to leave me alone. And every usually every time I do that, it, nothing happens for a good bit of time. And so, um, I'm trying to remember, okay, so, okay, let's start with the first time that I heard this. So I was actually sitting at my computer and I was just sitting, I think this was at like 11 at night, probably. And I was just watching YouTube and I heard someone clap like like i don't know if you know what it is but like you can like clap and it like is really loud Mm. it's not just like a normal clap it's like that where you can hear that like popping sound yeah it's like someone did that but with like five times the sound it was like five Mm. times louder it was like right in my ear my left ear right here and i thought spencer was in my room I thought Spencer literally was in my room. So I got up and I was like, get get out of my room. Mm-hmm. And so I got up and literally my door was still locked. I look around the room under my bed. I check everywhere. He's not anywhere. Because you were convinced and Spencer did convinced. that and he was hiding in your room. Yes, I was convinced someone was in there. I was convinced wow. Spencer was doing that. So I was freaking out. And I was like, why are you in here? You know, what the frick are you doing in here? Yeah. And... I was, and so I, just to make sure I went back like a minute in my YouTube video, not Hmm. a single sound, even close Hmm. to that came along. Not a single sound was close in the YouTube video. Um, And so that happened and I I was still unsure what it was, but fast forward probably a couple months later, I was laying in bed and like on my like like my stand next to my bed it's like a plastic container uh bin same yeah but drawers like plastic drawers and uh, my clothes in and so i was laying down on 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 my bed and i was i was facing i was facing that side of the room when i was sleeping and i was like i was at the point when you sleep where you're a couple seconds away from falling asleep, like mm-hmm. your body's fully gone. Yeah. And your brain's like here mm-hmm. and you're probably a couple seconds away from sleeping. Mm-hmm. I heard as if someone took the bottom drawer, pulled it out and just shoved it back in, like <laughs> literally just slammed it. Cause it was the exact same sound yeah. as if me opening and closing the drawer, except a million times louder. Wow. And I it literally like, I just sprung up and, once again, I literally was convinced Spencer was in my room. I thought Spencer was in my room, scaring the crap out of me. So mm-hmm. I got up immediately, got up, and I checked under my desk, checked under, I checked in the corner of my room everywhere, not a single thing. And and it's yeah. impossible for him to hide in there. Yeah. Like, there's, there's no, no, no places. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now there is because I have a bed that's elevated, but you know. But you can, had, yeah. Yeah, at the time, there was nowhere to hide, like mm-hmm. literally nowhere. And if he would have tried to get out of the room, I would have saw him because I got up instantly. Yeah. But that was the, so scary. Yeah. And I've, I mean, I, I don't think anything has happened super crazy. I mean, I've had little events where it's just been like, I've seen things literally fall off the shelf occasionally or or things fall off the wall when I'm looking mm-hmm. at it, or you know, things that obviously can happen, but whatever, I don't really count it as something yeah. paranormal. But all the things that I've told you are all things that I do believe are paranormal. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 freaking crazy, because the thing is, like you said, some things pro- might have happened since then, but you might be able to explain them, you know? Like, I don't know, they were on the edge of the whatever and someone bumped the wall blah 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 but the other things is unexplainable you know there's nothing that can explain it and that's just the sound things you know the like actual seeing things Mm -hmm. i mean that is that's when i know 
Also because it was so clear. Yeah. You know? God. That's... I mean, yeah, I, I, I try and think like, what do you think, what do you think it means seeing, I guess for the sounds, what do you think the sounds, what do you think that means? You know, I honestly don't know at all. I, I, no, I, 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 I of course, know. but what do you, do you have any like ideas? Do you have any, anything at all? I mean, the only thing I could really think of is maybe some like if if it was a spirit that like made me hear it it probably yeah. didn't happen but they could have made me hear it um maybe it's them making or like at the time making me get up because i needed to you know like if i fall I fell asleep mm. then then something would happen or something stupid but yeah or maybe even you know them telling me that they are there you know or maybe it's one of our yeah. relatives saying that they're with me. Yeah. You know, just these yeah. things that could have, that could be, you know. Yeah, something else I remembered. Know. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It could be anything. Literally, it could be anything. Um, it could even be you, you know, doing it to yourself in the, you know, and, you know, whenever you die, you know, you could like go back in time and do that. And I don't know could be a who knows you know what i mean could be anything mm -hmm. um yeah um another thing of those feelings you get um you know one time you said uh riley just be, be aware because i i have a feeling something bad's gonna happen and i'm like oh jesus like anybody else saying that i'd be like you know like, screw you man you know but jacks is like well jesus like something's gonna happen you know and so then i'm like all right i have to stay up all night <laughs> you know well, uh, i forgot how much i forgot you're that type of person um but mm. I mean, I'd rather have someone. No, it's, know it's good. Than yeah. No, I'm I'm glad you, know? you said that because I, I know you want to, you know, just do say that for some no reason. But the thing is, something bad did happen that night. Um, our brother got really drunk and got kind of just weird and crazy. So, you know, you had a feeling. No, you know. N no one like UFOs to attack, but something did happen. So yeah, there's nothing specific. Like I'm like, oh, if some you know, yeah. like bombs about it. You know exactly. You know, it's yeah. just something is gonna happen. Something yeah. feels wrong. Yeah, there's a disturbance in the force, and you have your finger on the uh, pulse. It's crazy. I mean, it's almost like like another sense that you possess you know like touch hear smell you have another sense that you can tap into sometimes and and just get these feelings i mean it's really crazy um and yeah i don't know it's very crazy i mean <sighs> and i feel like that the reason that I've seen these things and felt these things is like, cause I'm a huge fan of like the conjuring, right? The movies. Yeah, definitely. I feel like I like them so much. And sometimes they'll really bother me at times. It's just because some of the times those things are the exact same things I've seen. Well, it's, it's know? based off of, you know, stories mm -hmm. that people have said, and it could be people that possess the same sense that you, seem to possess yeah it's like you know, i mean like, really like, so that makes sense that you would relate with a lot of things and a lot of stories and you're like oh crap that all that just makes sense in your head you know when other people even you know me which i love film and i love story making i would look at it differently then and you would see different things in the story you know like oh this happened like this for this reason blah 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 it all makes perfect sense so i mean that's that's really freaky i mean especially that thing about grandma's house that is because i mean like i said i have had so many sleepovers there like 
hundreds and hundreds and nothing ever happened like that you know i remember one time i had this dream and it was like it was back when they had a, a tv in like a, a small tv with like it wasn't flat screen it was like the big one and it was in their oh, like TV. yeah and it was in like a entertainment like whatever it was like a one low to the ground and had like the buttons on the front for like power channel up channel, volume blah 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 really old old school tv and um uh i remember i had a dream well the thing is it didn't seem like a dream and i don't and i i still to this day don't know if it was a dream technically but i just chop it up to a dream just because of how dream like it was i guess but it was like i woke up or you know whatever i was just it was late at night and i was watching tv at their house like i do when i do sleep when i did sleepovers and there was like some i don't i i can't exactly remember what it was about what a tv show or whatever it was about but it's just something really gruesome I, I, I can't remember anything what it was about at all, but it was just something really g- gruesome and uh, really intense. And I was like trying to turn it off and like it just wouldn't turn off. And uh, yeah, very well could be real, but who knows? It's like all those things as a kid, it's like once you get older, you're like, did that even freaking happen? You know? Mm-hmm. What's the earliest dream you can remember? Hmm. The interesting thing about that, I think I've told you this before, but but um, this is probably the same as everyone, but I forget a lot of things, but they come back really easy, like off of smell off of touch, off of yeah. feeling. Like if you like smell a certain smell, it'll bring back an entire part of your memory that you forgot for smell 10 years of your very, life. Smell is very, very powerful to yeah. bring back. Memories. And so like sometimes like, cause Riley's had his friends, his, his friends that I've known for a while on the podcast occasionally. And I will, I'll just get on for like a minute just to listen to their voice, just so that it'll, mm like even if not just memories of them but memories of other people that During are related that time yeah or Maybe. yeah and so like i'll listen to their voice and it'll spark this part of my brain and it'll flush these old memories back in and i'll remember them right and so like i don't remember the like the farthest dream that i could remember Mm -hmm. occasionally i will have like i'll touch something or smell it or feel it and it'll bring it back and i'll be like oh my god that was like a million years ago right i dream of that Mm -hmm. um yeah i know of a couple i just don't remember them Mm -hmm. um i mean yeah i just can't remember that Mm -hmm. far but but what's your earliest memory Probably, probably me and grandpa picking plums off of the plum tree at our old house. At our old house? (laughs) I just remember him getting a ladder and we just got on the ladder and picked plums off the tree. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's weird. I mean, I almost remember it's my earliest memory is kind of it's another one of those things where i don't know if i'm just imagining this or i don't know if it i told it to mom and she said it it all added up but it was just me like on the floor like literally couldn't even walk if i don't think um but i was like on the floor playing with this stormtrooper uh action figure and I was almost, I was like, I remember being so small and like being able to just look underneath the couch and just like play this thing. Uh, it's, it's weird, but that's like one that I don't know if I'm making up 
or but it it seems pretty vivid in my main mind but one thing that's that i know is very early um and i know is my like guaranteed memory i remember is like me watching spongebob with my blanket which i called bobo i think and uh um and i was sitting there watching spongebob back when it like just came out um and my mom came in told me to come out and like i went out and it was my birthday and like everybody was around the table um and i think it was like a, a darth vader cake and yeah that was pretty cool and that is like a guaranteed thing i mean gosh it's just crazy to think that that actually happened you know like that actually happened and i don't know it's like now look at me no i'm just kidding but it's like it's crazy to think of time flooping fl 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 flies yeah if there was like like i've always asked this I've asked this to riley but like what is one time in your life that you would go back to now we all have different we all have different you know moments in our life where it meant something more than everything else like obviously like getting my first car that's a huge moment but i you know it's obviously not the best point in my life where i you know where i would go back to and replay it i feel yeah. like the one time where i would go back to would be when at our old house just with the people like our friends that we had there you know like we always i don't know if you remember but we would always have those like nerf gun wars throughout the entire neighborhood and, and it wasn't know, even like bullets, right? I, I don't remember. I think it was just normal nerf gun bullets. I don't think we even used bullets, I'm pretty sure. I think we would just, well, I don't know if it was like that with you, but I know when we grew up, we would just do like, you know, like, boom, I, I gotcha. And we would, you know, gentleman's rule, like, oh, he probably got me, you know, and stuff like that. And that was so awesome because it was completely imaginary, you know? Yeah. I don't even know. We we didn't even have guns in our hands a lot of the time. But then, you know, we got, like, fake guns and Nerf mm -hmm. guns and stuff like that. Yeah, the people but, next to us, had, I think they were the people that really supplied the weapons. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, now I'm remembering we did do Nerf. And, mm -hmm. um, and that was so awesome because, yeah, yeah, I would totally go back and do that. Yeah, it's true. just now You're people right. would get hit and they'd be like, eh. I know, Didn't but you know, that was that was cool back then. And, you know, some kids did, but they're kids. But that's the thing. Is like, and that was the whole neighborhood, which that sounds intense, but it was probably like, I'm trying to think. The neighborhood is big, but it's not like, it's like our neighborhood kind of went in a circle. You know, yeah. like it had the road, like the road was a circle and then the middle was like was a, a playground loop, and loop then a giant field. With a giant meadow in the yeah. middle. And it was like a giant, um, like there were trees that surrounded the circle. So mm. there was like a lot of like coverage for like you yeah. to like play in a game. And so it was awesome because when you play in the Nerf Gun War, it would probably last around an hour. Um, and, you know, you had teams and that I remember. We had teams and we would always just like, like, I don't know if you remember, but there's those paths with all those, like, bushes yeah. along the side. And you just, like, go down and you, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just remember how fun that was. Because the, the neighborhood was so big. But it was, like, not too big where you'd get lost or yeah. never find anyone. It was the it was, perfect size. It was perfect size. And it seemed a lot bigger as a kid. Because yeah. now if we went back, we're like, I could walk across this meadow in, like, mm -hmm. 30 seconds, you know. <laughs> yeah. And they had like in the middle of the field, they would have like dips where kind of like trees mm -hmm. grew, so you could like hide in the bushes yeah. and kind of just sit there. And God, that was that was yeah, an I amazing would place back. to grow up. I mean, that neighborhood, perfect. And yeah, we, we had like ten kids at some points, like all doing this war, and we'd do mm. five on five or whatever, and you know. Uh, make the team so it was fair because uh, I was the best. No, I'm just kidding. No, but I think it was funny because I was like, I was the oldest in that group. 
and then our friend hunter was the second oldest and then and then you know we we hung out with micah and dom which are older than us but then and we still we we played nerf with micah and dom i don't know if you remember we would do it inside of their house and i remember i got shot in the eyeball i remember it like bounced right off my eye i didn't even get a chance to blink because like ah oh. <laughs> yeah that goes to show nerf guns you can get shot point not point blank but directly in the eyeball and you just go ah oh, for like 30 seconds and then you're ready to rock yeah it's, it's... now these nerf guns they have now where it's like spencer has these bullets with a yellow ball like that would Hurts. explode your eyeball yeah they have like those the ones that he has they have like a plastic tip not like the rubber ones that we used to have but the yeah. solid hard plastic and it hurts. yeah i know and then and then those like yellow balls yeah. that are heavy and like they shoot so freaking quick like nerf guns you can almost dodge you know but these it's like it's like a slightly slower than an airsoft gun it's crazy yeah i mean they're fun but you don't want to get shot hit. The eye. yeah the, the phase would not be fun yeah you need eye protection for those because mm-hmm. it's it's intense um it's funny how how kids like guns so much you know it's almost like, like ultimate it's just tag. because they're the amount of like imagination yeah they can like because when you're older you know you, you kind of just are more realistic well yeah you know? i'm thinking about getting an actual one <laughs> yeah exactly but when you're that young you don't know a lot of the realistic parts of that area like you didn't know yeah. that there were real guns in the world you probably didn't know that when uh, when you were like five yeah, but true. you your imagination knew that you know they knew all yeah, this and so it just seemed like toys back then mm-hmm. you know yeah and so like like and it was amount, guns were made just to play with you know and play with your friends and the imagine and the amount of power that your imagination holds especially when you're young is crazy and so you, you know, could do anything for with sure. when you were that young in your brain mm-hmm. like because they believed it you believed it when you were that young you know yeah that's you so wanted true. to it you wanted to at least mm-hmm. um, but so it was it's easy to just use your imagination in a game with a bunch of people yeah who are the exact same feeling about that exactly they're all using their imagination yeah. they're not all playing to win or you know to you have well, fun it was it's um, literally pure fun. just fun and using your imagination yeah. and those type of moments in your life you never forget and i will never I forget those times ever i know it's crazy i mean it really is and and the whole concept of time again it's just it's overwhelming you know because think of how much time we've spent at the house we're at we are at right now you know like we've been it's here 11 years we've been here longer than we were at the other house and we have, I mean, God, it's like, it's difficult for me because I got in this house in seventh grade. So I graduated sixth grade elementary school and then instantly was put into a different school where I didn't know anybody. And that was very difficult. So it also, so, so it's almost like time went very slow. And, I don't freaking know. I mean, so much has happened in the time we've just lived in this house. When I remember moving to this house, you know, and this was like, oh my gosh, new house, you know, it's so big. And and now it seems, it's still big, but now it seems a lot smaller. And mm-hmm. maybe it's because we've all got, we've all gotten bigger, but man, Jax, if there's one thing you need to know, well, there's a lot of things probably more important than this. I don't know. But just really like spending time with the family at your age and at younger ages is so important because, you know, we're never going to be able to do it the same. You know, I mean, think back to 
when we were in the meadows, we'll never be able to play Nerf guns like that the same, you know? If we go out and do that, we're like, eh, let's get some airsoft or let's do some paintball or mm. stuff like that, you know? Like, and, you know, it's just like, time goes so quickly that if you're not spending your days with things that you want to do and are good for you and good for the people around you you're just like i don't know it's crazy you know i mean what the dunder mifflin happens when we die you know tell me the answer john tell me the answer i've been wondering i mean i i just believe that you go to heaven if you want to That'd be you nice. choose for the people who are like in my opinion and what i see people who are like murderers people who just don't deserve happiness yeah. these people they go to hell i believe that people who want yeah. to go to heaven people who deserve they all go to heaven but if you don't if you don't or you can't you become a spirit mm. if you don't want to you just become a spirit and you you still live you just you're alone or whatever but sometimes you can't because yeah. i feel like those people like the people like murderers when they kill something that thing that they killed it the person that died it was their life was taken not not taken casually like where you just like you're ready to you're ready to pass yeah. they, it was taken from them yeah and so they can't ever leave it's like trapped and so that's why you see at like these at these like prisons and these like insane asylums these these spirits that are just trapped there they're all people that were never happy never never really like they're just trapped because they never yeah. found enough happiness to move on yeah it's 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 not like if you know you get hit by a car or something tragic then then you're automatically trapped it i don't believe that because you know it wasn't their fault and mm -hmm. it just happened yeah i think i mean what i i think whatever happens after you die is the absolute you know and it varies from person to person, um, you know, maybe if you're bad or good, whatever. I think whatever, when you die, whatever the absolute best scenario is, that's what happens. And, you know, whether that's reincarnation or whether that's heaven or whether that's just floating around doing whatever you want, we could probably, I mean, we probably can't even conceive of what that is, but whatever is the best scenario and the best situation, that's probably what happens, you know? Because it's like, there's so much more, so much more to this ding dong life or existence, this, than meets the eye, you know? So much more. and. I mean, it, it, it seems like almost sometimes this is just the beginning, you know? This life is just the beginning, you know what I mean? It's loco crazy, and, and, and who knows? You might never be able to get into this realm again. So it's like when, when you think it's like, oh, I should have done that, I should have done this, and it's like, you know... And when I see older people that have regret, it's like the most sad thing possible. Because they can't go back and fix it. You can't go back. Yeah. It's, that's why I try to fix the moments in my life that I regret the most. I try to fix it in the, the presence or the, the present right now. I try to like, because sometimes like you know like even the most simple things like when you're when someone asks you to go to the store with them yeah exactly. you know yeah. if you literally cannot then don't 
but if you can, if you have the option to, if you, you know, you're not doing anything or you're playing a game, just go with them. You yeah, know? exactly. Or it's like, hey, let's watch a movie downstairs, you know. <laughs> Little bit of backstory. <laughs> We've been wanting to watch a movie with Jax for... 10 plus years and no, busy, man. 10 plus years <laughs> no we, we just always want to watch a movie and Jax only wants to watch these specific movies which are usually which are good like yeah, Harry Potter, Harry okay. Potter <laughs> which we just watch all seven or however many of them like they're always good like two months ago or something I was watching this we were watching the second one again last night I'm like wait it seems like we just watched this, which we did. <laughs> I just the reason that I they're enjoy great. those movies I'm not is just because that. they bring me back to when I was younger. Yeah, they no, remind I, I me of that. when I had a simple life, not worrying about doing twenty plus hours of homework a freaking week. Yeah. You know, you're right. And I was, you know, but you know, there are other movies out there that are really good, and and it's. And, you know, someone that really got that through my brain um, is, well, for one, um, for sure, dad, obviously, because he he knows a lot of good movies and we've we've watched movies. I've watched movies with him all my life, but my old boss, Wax, um, He's like, have you ever seen this? Oh my gosh, you have to see it. And then blah, blah, blah. Because I, I kind of stayed in my own bubble. And he wrote down like a list of like nine movies. I'm like, oh my God, like all these movies. Like, And then I watched them all and they all like made me feel some type of way and like completely almost changed my life. And I'm like, Jiminy Cricket. It's like, I can't imagine a life where I didn't see this. You know what I mean? So it's like, and as you evolve, you know, like maybe it's different for me because I really like movies. Like I want to be a film director or something along those lines. And I love making films. So I look at them differently, but I don't know. I mean, they're, I don't know. I, I love, I think it's very important to watch new movies. And sometimes you watch a movie and you're like, that was a waste of time and that was garbage, but you had to watch the whole thing for you to know that, you know? And sometimes obviously you're watching a movie and you're like, no, I'm no point and I'm going to continue this. But, you know, mm. it's, it's like, there are some amazing, amazing movies and it's almost like a song, you know, you'll find a song. You're like, how is that? How did I live? without this song in my life you know and then you find this movie and you're like oh my gosh this is one of my favorite movies now like i, I would have had to i could have been watching this or a tv show you know like his tv show has been out like like breaking bad i didn't watch breaking bad for like the first like six years it was out i was like breaking bad breaking bad it was just like some weird name you know like breaking bad what does that even mean and then i started watching and i'm like oh my god you know what i mean like so good probably the same with the walking dead you know like or game of thrones and and all that crap it's like and even to this day right now as i'm speaking i know there are movies out there that if i just went into netflix and ch chose this perfect movie or whatever i'd find it and like this is absolutely amazing or a song or you know anything it's just like expanding your horizons and finding new things is i don't know to me it's incredibly important and uh and great for life you know yeah. makes life better but that's that <laughs> um do you want to talk about Tarkov at all or no? Well, I would, but the you people do. who are watching this usually don't understand anything about it. Okay. I mean, they appreciate, I would think they appreciate anything we talk about that we're passionate about. We don't have to if you don't want to, but, and, or we could, you know, call it here, save it for another episode. 
um, whatever you're feeling. I can go for hours, baby. It's more like how much can your computer hold? No, actually, Zoom records, um, they're they're very small. Like this one's probably like a gigabyte or something at most. What? Yeah. Wow. I don't know. I mean, it's not like we're recording in 4K or anything. Your webcam looks like it's like 120p. Really? <laughs> it's actually, it's like 240 or like 360. Really? It doesn't look like that for me. Really? Does mine yeah. look like garbage? It looks like probably, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it's like low. Okay. Well, we'll have to compare after the thing is done. But yeah, it's I, mean, it's, I mean, it's not bad. You know, it's just like. It's probably the Zoom settings. I'm sure, yeah. It, yeah. That's something I probably should look into, but. Yeah, I mean, do you have anything else you want to talk about for this episode? Episode 10 is pretty, uh, pretty meaningful episode. Double digits. It Next milestone like... is triple digits. Triple Ds. That's a while away. But I do feel like we should... Um, this, I don't know if this is even important, but I feel like we should um, make a video of ourselves... Um, just saying something to ourselves in five years just like a yeah. video of us saying whatever like i hope that you talking to myself yeah hope that you are gonna be a doctor or you are gonna be studying right now right. or you're gonna have family just something you know and just talking to that the future you and then in 10 years or five years True. or whatever how long you look at it Compare. And then you compare and how yeah, did it go? That would be now. very cool. You know, it would be a trip. I saw Mr. Beast do this. He like, he recorded a video like five years ago or something and then scheduled it to upload in five years. Mm-hmm. Isn't that a trip? And then it randomly he's like, yeah. I hope I have a million subscribers. And he's got like 50 million or whatever. It's crazy. That's really why I said that. Because I thought that that was a good idea. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'm down to do that. I mean, you want to make like separate videos or? Man, nah, we can do it whenever. Not right now, because. Yeah. Yeah, we can just wrap this up and continue another talk whenever. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. We got a lot of good things in this episode. And and uh, next time we can talk about like some upcoming video games, because hopefully let's freaking pray at Dying Light 2, New World, um, Hightail, all that crap will be coming out by the time we upload the next podcast together, but let's be honest. It's not going to. Let's just hold our mics up like that. <laughs> you got quieter. <laughs> um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope it wasn't too rambly for y'all. hope you enjoyed it to the maximum. I hope you enjoyed Jax's beautiful face. Um, and the stories and knowledge he gave. <laughs> and um, if you enjoyed it, consider liking, consider subscribing. I make podcasts every Monday and I do not plan on stopping. Actually, I plan on stopping when I enter the realm of death. Is that too dark? <laughs> All right. Thank you everyone for everyone for watching and I'll see you next Monday. Peace. <laughs>